What is going on, you big bellied bunnies? That's right, we're doing more Year of the Rabbit shit. <laughs> still not giving up on Year of the Rabbit. It's still not Year of the Rabbit as well. Not quite. Nothing has changed. Not quite. Not quite. Still not quite. <laughs> it's next week. It's next week. Okay. Sunday, Sunday the 22nd, so I can get one more in <laughs> next week. <laughs> right, okay, one more episode. <laughs> Squeeze it in. Anyway, before we get too far down the rabbit hole... Oh, very nice. Oh, man. Oh, this is going to be a good episode. <laughs> <sighs> F*** me. You're coming in hot. Like <laughs> uh, nope, I've got no more rabbit puns. Not today. Oh, okay. Uh, we ran dry quick. Hey, I only had one prepared and you got two. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear me. So, yes, welcome to the show. Episode 22. Second of 2023. Lots of twos. That's what we like to see. Oh, that rhymed. Poet and I don't know. Lyrical miracle. Blah. My name is James, also known as Mr. Bames, and I'm as always joined by the wondrous Will, also known as Hudafunk. What's up, podcast party people? Back again. Ooh, another another week, another pod. Yeah, we're hitting everything off, all this. We're, all yeah. guns loaded, baby. What? All guns loaded, all barrels loaded. What? All guns blazing. All guns blazing, barrels all loaded. barrels loaded, cocked. Locked, cocked, and ready to pop. Rock. <laughs> Rock. We'll take it. We, yeah, God, we, we really did run out of steam quickly. <laughs> Nothing like a chaotic introduction, though, just to get the old juices going, right? Have you been this week, man? You all good? Uh, sore. Sore this week. Yeah. Has it been a heavy gym week? Uh, just, yeah, basically. And just life. Has life got you sore? No, bro? do you know, life's actually all right. I can't complain too much. <laughs> you know, it's new year, nothing's changed. <laughs> I mean, new year, that's it. <laughs> yeah, the number at the end of the year's changed. That's about all I got, really. No, yeah, just Jim saw man, just, uh, you know, getting back into it, coming off an injury as well, so just working that through, but we don't we don't want to bore the listeners with that. <laughs> How about you, man? How's everything good? Yeah, all good. Uh, I've got back from a sightseeing tour in Oxford today, uh, taking some extended family out, showing them the sights. Nice, man. And uh, how'd you get on? You had a nice day for it today. Yeah, it was good. It was kind of like a rare occasion where we actually get some good weather in England, so you got to take that to the fullest opportunity yeah especially since it's fucking off tomorrow apparently yeah absolutely yeah yeah today was definitely the day to do it before uh we kind of get back to our regular dreary rainy weather yeah sounds about right shout out to the extended family yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i won't uh, won't name them we haven't got any uh podcast permissions prior to the episodes so uh, oh god all over the alliteration just, today uh, ah, just you're all oozing. over your peas oozing dripping i am dripping with alliteration so maybe i should give up the gimmick but no it was yeah it, it was all good we uh we shopped around a little bit stopped for free cocktails here and there so all good all good cheeky cheeky primed for the podcast i'm just slipping just more sorry, peas just more peas that's all i got and, and as long as as one of the peas is is podcast yeah. <laughs> then i am dripping with peas alliterations yeah powerfully poetic some might say yeah well, there you go you've got more than i do <laughs> Oh, but, dear. but before we get uh, too into our alliterations, I couldn't think of anything funny involving peas there quick enough. Uh, let's, uh, let's hit up those socials. You can, as always, find the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and pretty much anywhere else you get podcasts from by searching for Total Pod Mode. We also post regular video content of our playthroughs, stream highlights, as well as the podcast on our YouTube channel, Total Pod Mode. You can also find us on Twitter by searching for at Total Pod Mode, all one word. And whilst you're there, you can find me at Mr. Bames, and I'm also on Twitch under twitch.tv forward slash Mr. Bames underscore TPM. And you can find me at Hoodafunk on Twitter, and I'm also on Twitch under twitch.tv forward slash Hoodafunk. And with that said and done, let's talk about some fucking games. So man, hit me up. What have you been playing this week? Well, man, uh, getting a little bit ahead of myself, but I've actually managed to get some hours in this week's streaming Mass Effect, which obviously uh, we don't want to don't want to speak too much about that. We got the completionist corner down the road, down the podcast. Uh, that we'll get into that into a bit more detail. But uh, yeah, no, I was very pleased to be able to actually uh, get my sh together and actually put on a stream or two for the old podcast. I feel like that's a direct dig. <laughs> Maybe. Actually, I actually managed to get my shit together and actually get I the actually fucking, fucking yeah, pulled my fucking finger out. Hey. Hey. Listen. There's loads of great content on the, on the Mr. Bames underscore TPM Twitch channel. There's an excellent profile picture. There's a bio. It, it says, please insert description of bio here. Yes. It, it, it I think if there is a bio, it probably just says podcast host on total pod mode. I think that's probably all it says. <laughs> oh, dear me. But no, man, nice. Good streamage. 
Yeah, no, uh, the streams were they were really enjoyable. Uh, racked up a, a couple of followers each stream, which I was really pleased about. We're getting too ahead of ourselves. We need to step away <laughs> from that. Let's get into uh, some of the other games I'm playing this week. Uh, Stardew Valley, uh, I've uh, once again been sort of working my way in there. We're still in the midst of winter, so I'm unable to grow any crops. My farm is still entirely barren and uh, still strongly resembles uh, sort of like a, a desolate empty concentration camp so yeah. uh still needs a woman's touch it, it? It, yeah it's it's messy out there <laughs> yeah. uh so working my way there i, I did actually one night I, I woke up and the uh the screen that it typically gives you is you sort of it's black and then you wake up in your house but this time i was met with a message that said an explosion happened during the night or something like that or like a loud boom happened during the night i step out my friend door Go to check on my crops, make sure everything's all in order, and uh, look over and see that like a giant kind of meteorite with purple crystals uh, has like crashed into my backyard. So nice. I'm unable to mine it currently with the pickaxe that I'm currently using, so I need to go ahead and upgrade that. That's kind of been my main mission. I've actually managed to since the meteor has landed, I've managed to upgrade it once. Was hoping that would be enough, but it's not. Other than that, I've been kind of trying to get to level 100 in the mines. Uh, I'm still hanging around just before 90, I think 88, 89. The monsters get hard down there, man. I'm actually like, uh, actually having a challenge keeping up with fighting the monsters now. I'm not really sure whether I need to get clothes that have better defense or whether I need to start like eating stuff that gives you defense <laughs> or more attack. But yeah, I need to spend a little bit more time figuring out that last bit because apparently once you get to level 100, you uh, unlock a new area in the game use right whatever that is i don't really know but trying to figure this out on my own sort of thing and stay in the yeah. dark as much as possible i don't want to like check out a wiki and uh figure that out too early on i think part of the enjoyment is just figuring the game out as you play it then i shan't ask any follow-up questions lest i give something away well if you're referring to the fact that the asteroid that's fallen out of the sky may well be an iridium asteroid no borderlands crossover here mate is it iridium i think it is iridium there is iridium in uh in stardew valley i think it's called that uh, you're talking uh, about things i don't know about then i was gonna <laughs> i was gonna just say i think i might know what the area you're unlock is but i don't want to say it in case it's big old surprise okay okay yeah well i'll you know i'll have to see when i actually get there hopefully that might be uh next week but um, i'm struggling as i say at the moment to actually beat the enemies down there they just take yeah. so many hits and they uh, do a lot of damage to your health uh, other than that, we went through the ice festival and I won the ice fishing competition there. Congratulations. Willie f***ing sucks. That fisherman Willie, uh, he's no good. It's all about who to funk, man. It's all about the duke playing through on that playthrough. <laughs> Love how you've called yourself the duke on that and it's like, I live in a f***ing shack. Yeah, yes, I still <laughs> do live in the shack. <laughs> it's not very dukely quarters, I will no. say. Since I admitted that on the podcast, it has been higher up on my to-do list, but it hasn't quite pipped it yet. So I'm still waiting for uh, for that to come around. Hey, it's a marathon, not a sprint, man. It's a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> there's a there's a, there's a carpenter somewhere around that will. Uh, I think her name's Robin, and she will uh, she'll upgrade your pad if you give her a load of wood and money. I guess so. Well, I didn't think it was that sort of game. <laughs> That's nasty. But other than that, I mean, it's pretty sort of business as usual, man. Uh, you know, Pierre gets his pond algae. Uh, I go fishing and uh, look for ways to treat Linus and, uh, you know, make sure he's uh, well fed on his berries. Yeah, and seduce Pierre's daughter. Yeah, that's, that again, that's, we're really not making any headway there. I, I'm, I've discovered that I'm not very good at socialising in this game. I don't know whether that extends to real life as well, but... Uh... Well, I mean, I don't appreciate the algae you keep giving me, but... <laughs> <laughs> but other than that socially you're fine i think yeah i mean yeah it's it's not as malicious when i give it to you as it is with no no the, it's very uh, loving uh, yeah it's i mean loving occasionally when you throw a turnip at me it's a bit harsh but <laughs> i know i know that it comes from a sweet place <laughs> i guess it kind of says something about my character that uh my only friend is a guy that chooses to ostracize himself from yeah. the rest of the town and live on the outskirts in a tent yeah complete outcast yeah <laughs> We're kindred souls in that sense. I just choose to surround myself in a shack at the very least. If I can get to the mines, level 100, and I can finally mine that asteroid that is, uh, I think it's like an iridium asteroid, which is, uh, uh, it's, I, I think it's like one of the higher levels of quality. It's like your typical, you go from copper to steel to 
I don't know. Uh, Silver, point, gold, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess. Yeah. Which always confused me because gold would be a shit sword material. It's too malleable. Exactly. And, and I think that they kind of, in some games, they incorporate that into it. In some games, they yeah. don't. I think Minecraft, like a gold sword, is actually quite rubbish. And then other games completely ignore that and they make a gold sword better than a steel sword. What's up, Risen One? <laughs> But that's about me for the week, man. Uh, you know, it's it's been a it's been a week. As I say, I've been uh, entertaining family, and uh, yeah, haven't uh, squeezed in much gaming time at all. Uh, I think uh, over to you. Well, this will be nice and easy because I have basically just played Mass Effect this week. So, <laughs> okay, I'll give a slight shout out to Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I spoke about it a little bit last week. I've carried that on a bit, and I really mean a bit. I've done like maybe five or six side quests so maybe an hour, hour what are the side here. quests like in this game what are they are this is it your classic like tail this guy for five minutes and then steal something from him or are they a bit more i imagine they must have moved on since that i wouldn't say they've moved on but it's uh, <laughs> but oh, it's dear. more things like you know no no I, but i like I, I like all this stuff when it's surrounded in a good story i can deal with it right okay. but you know like go find herbs to give to the herbalist to make medicine you then have to give the medicine to people. You come back and it turns out he wants to kill his grandma. So then you go off to a mission to find his grandma. She's been stolen by bandits. So you have to go rescue them. And then you decide whether to kill her, show mercy or whatever. And then you bang the herbalist. So th that was of one course. side quest I did. And and my uh, my my guy is, he just, he bangs everything. So male, female, doesn't matter what you are. If there's an option to bang, he's going to bang. I think that is, uh, that is a good way to play video games. That's, uh, that is the correct way to play video games. Particularly when it's based in ancient Greece, because that's what they did. They just fucked it. Everyone just bangs. Everyone, it's yeah. just, uh, just like a, a town-wide orgy. Basically, yeah. Country-wide. Country-wide. Really a nationwide orgy. And, you know, I'm just doing my part for historical <laughs> accuracy, really. But no, so not really a lot more to say on that. Uh, I'm, that's going to be a game I just dip into every so often because I don't, as I said last week, I don't want to lose traction with it. I want to finish it, so. Uh, well, I just wanted to get a little bit into, uh, do you have any sort of, like, assassin's gadgets in this one? Do you get a retractable blade? Is there anything? You get the Spear of Leonidas, which is like a snapped spear that you use to do your stabby things. Ah, uh, the Spear of Leonidas is like... The equivalent of the wrist thing, except it's not at all the wrist thing. It's, except it's on your back. <laughs> it's a bit more primitive. It's like it's not like a spring-loaded wrist blade. It's just a no, thing no, you no. just like. It's just it's just a fucking pointy thing that you keep on your back. But no, so no, none of that. But I quite like that. To me, it's more just like an ancient Greek Greece RPG. With yeah, occasionally you come out of the um, what are the machines called. Animus. Th I think. This is how little I give a shit about that side of it. <laughs> you couldn't give a fuck about the sci-fi element games. No, yeah, fuck yeah. all that. I don't care about the the Eden oh, stuff. Oh, I and... want to know Ethan's story. Shut up. <laughs> no, I, ju I just want to be a Greek guy. Just fucking shut up, man. Come on. <laughs> but no, so yeah, not much progress on that, but I'll probably be dipping back into that in the coming weeks, probably months, if I'm being honest. So yeah, a little bit of that. And then the only other thing I've played other than Mass Effect is we jumped into a very, very quick session of Grand Theft Auto 5, but really was very quick. I mean, I think we played for an hour or two at most. It's yeah. Yeah, absolutely. A couple of missions. It was a quick check-in. You know, we boosted the cred for the old Total Pop Mode crew. We, yeah, uh, I, I yeah. went up two levels. We checked in. We checked in. But it might yeah. be, you know, the start of something, because we've done that now. It had been a while since we got on that, and hopefully that will be our kind of go-to. We had a bit of a distressing situation for a second, because we used to have a bunch of games, like, pre-installed that we were currently playing, and then, honestly, like, <laughs> this podcast has taken a toll on the friendship. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of like the effect you know the amount of like uh like social time that we actually spent together we spend a lot of time like working together now sort of thing which don't get me yeah. wrong but i think we both enjoy that as well but uh yeah there's there's not much time left in the old diary for gaming together much these days so uh you know it's it was good to squeeze that in but uh hopefully the uh you know that will be the spur onto something bigger where we uh start putting some hours into this but the sudden realization that we didn't have hardly any of the same games installed anymore yeah. on the <laughs> which i also blame on the podcast in a way because uh turns out sound effects and audacity files take up a lot of room yeah right yeah these recordings they're not light on the file size so no. yeah i just had to buy myself a four terabyte ssd just to... <laughs> <laughs> um but no it was very good fun uh first time we played together since uh episode six <laughs> <laughs> is it really that long my god i think so yeah because okay, that was the incrimination special right which is just right a, right just after we played or was that actually was that yeah no i think it was i think it was i'm pretty sure 
go check out the incrimination special episode six total pub mode wherever you get your podcasts from very fun very fun indeed lots of uh good banter about being pimps and drug dealers and things like that <laughs> but uh, that's me ah fair enough man well it sounds like we've had a pretty uh kind of game light week well not really we'll, we'll get into it later <laughs> now that we're all caught up why don't we uh move on to a bit of the gaming news <laughs> So, first news story this week, familiar one for those that have been following the podcast from the early days, Microsoft and Activision Blizzard, that whole shitstorm. It's still simmering. Still simmering, still stuff going on, and it turns out, not just Sony have an issue with this. Apparently, NVIDIA and Google both have expressed concern to the FTC about this takeover. They're weighing in now. Yeah, which is, uh, I think we'd mentioned before on the pod that Google might have an issue with it, and we'd sort of laughed at the fact that how can they have an issue with anything when they sort of have tried to monopolize various segments of the business world themselves. It matches the hypocrisy of uh, uh, the PlayStation exclusivity deals as well, you know? Yeah. So it's on brand for this whole clusterfuck of uh, idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. But, but I don't see what NVIDIA has to gain out of this. But apparently both Google and, and NVIDIA have expressed concerns over this acquisition. Sources claim that NVIDIA stressed the need for equal and open access to games titles. According to the um, article from our good friends at The Gamerant, it's worth pointing out that the representative of NVIDIA didn't outright oppose the acquisition, just raised concerns, as opposed to Sony, who have obviously said, F*** this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, NVIDIA's worries are shared by Google, with the two companies apprehensive about Microsoft potentially gaining an unfair advantage in the cloud, mobile gaming, and subscription niches. Well, I mean, uh, at the moment, they it feels like they kind of already have a, a big advantage in terms of the service that they actually are able to offer, you know? <laughs> yeah, and for me, the fact that Google are having a go at the cert, like, you know, saying, oh, they've got an unfair advantage in the cloud, you had a fucking chance to say something about that, and you fucked it up. How like, was that? Know, How so? Stadia. Oh, right, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like, I mean, like, you had, you yeah, had the they, they, to do that, that is now closed. Uh, That's so. done, yeah. Actually, that got, a, uh, that got a closed day, which I believe is, uh, at the time of recording, tomorrow, <laughs> actually. Ooh. Yeah, that is the official shut-off day for Google Stadia. I think that was a little announcement earlier this week. Thought I'd slide that in there in the news section. Well, I hope that all... Did we say it was three of the Stadia owners? I think it was three. Probably two now. I hope that both of them... Uh, are aware and have backed up their saves and whatnot yeah absolutely and uh got refunds for the hardware and things like that it did seem like i think that was the last time we covered it they were talking about uh offering, offering i think so for the controllers for, and things yeah. like that i don't know about yeah. subscriptions or whatever but probably for the peripherals yeah mm, mm. but no so yeah it's uh yet more nonsense in this story it's, it's one of them ones i think until the case closes the people are going to keep wading in i mean it, it keeps the news train going but it's uh you know it's pretty crazy to me just let Microsoft do it, and then if they fucking, if they do end up with a monopoly, then just put sanctions on them. Like, don't just stop it. Just stop it. Border this story now. I'm thinking. Uh, I'm, you know, I am genuinely wondering when we'll actually see an end to this case. Surely there has to be a time limit, sort of thing. This can't just go on indefinitely. Otherwise, you're gonna have, you know, anyone could essentially pile in. We could pile in. What more than we have already? <laughs> No, I've got a feeling it's June or July. Right, okay, okay. Verdict's meant to be reached, but mm, don't hold okay. me to that, I could be wrong. Fair enough, it's yeah, this, this, this year is just for sure. keep rolling, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. As always, we'll keep you updated with the goings-on in this, but uh, no end in sight still at this stage, just more people getting involved, probably trying to muddy the waters for whatever reason. Probably mates of Jim Ryan. Oh yeah, the bitch! So moving on to our second news story, this one a little bit more... Not a little bit more depressing, I don't suppose, because the other one's not exactly great news, but this one uh, doesn't put Ubisoft in a good light, I wouldn't say. The article I have from PC Gamer, the title is Ubisoft is having a bad time, <laughs> which is uh, kind of putting it, you know, quite nicely, really, considering what's going on, because this week Ubisoft announced that Pirate MMO, and I mean Pirate MMO as in pirate stylies you are a pirate on the sea are rather than pirate i've just hacked this and i'm now cracked it yeah yeah uh, mmo skull and bones has been delayed for the 18,232nd time i think it is at this stage but kind of 
tied in with all that is the fact that internally Ubisoft have cancelled a number of upcoming unannounced games that they were working on. I believe it's two or three. They're taking their time with Skull and Bones. I mean, that's... uh... It's been a couple of years now, at least, yeah longer if you've had eyes on it sort of thing but um but it's it's been like in terms of the wider public eye sort of thing yeah it has been out there yeah. and you know it, it looks like a very different game to what your minds might immediately go to the current pirate game like sea of thieves it looks a lot more crew based as opposed to you know you as the individual but uh it's it's taking an absolute age to get here and uh i wonder what these other titles that they've canned are it's not assassin's creed mirage I know that. <laughs> Watch Dogs 4 maybe was one that they might have been counting. Like, I don't know. I don't even know how well Legion did, to be honest. Not I don't think that, yeah, I don't think critically or commercially did, did particularly well. That actually sort of brings us on to the main crux of this Ubisoft issue, which is obviously as a result of all this, their share prices have plummeted. Shareholder confidence is low. And they've been saying some pretty interesting things, Ubisoft, about how they believe that the issue is with the gaming industry because the gaming industry isn't interested in sort of middle of the road sort of average size games anymore they're only interested in triple a's and all this which is which is obviously nonsense when you look at the fact that stray was nominated for game of the year last year yeah absolutely yeah there's just like stark uh examples where that hasn't been the case They've sort of come under fire a lot in recent times for not being particularly good with their games. And they turn off a bunch of the servers recently for some of their games. Stop supporting th- a lot something of Something the... like Rainbow Six Extraction was yeah. pretty awful in terms of how it was received. Just like ill-conceived ideas from the beginning sort of thing. And, you know, these don't come necessarily from the staff that they're currently telling the ball's in your court. <laughs> like that's, uh, you know... Yeah. That's come from the top. Uh, you better get that shit delivered on time and to a high quality sort of thing. But I mean, can you blame those dudes for the way that Extraction came out and the idea behind all of that? Did anyone want to play that game? I think from the top down, they need, well, yeah, uh, more from the top than down. They need to take a long look at themselves and think about what they're actually trying to achieve here other than being a company that shits out an Assassin's Creed game every few years and doesn't do much else. <laughs> <laughs> I've got sort of respect for Ubisoft, but I don't really know why, if that makes sense. Because obviously I like The Division a lot. Division and Division 2 I've got a lot of time for. Honestly, U- Ubisoft used to have some absolute bangers back in the day. I mean, I was a huge fan of the Splinter Cell series as well. There were some absolute fantastic examples of uh, of great Ubisoft titles. And they did do Far Cry as well, let's be real. Far Cry 3 is a wicked game. Exactly. Well, yeah, I know. I played all of them up until 5, I believe, and you know, and enjoyed all of them in their, in yeah. their time. So, yeah, I, I think it's just a, a kind of a case that they're a bit washed out of, of games and ideas now. I think they really need to buck their ideas a little bit. I know that... Yeah. We, we sort of spoke a number of months ago now briefly about how the fact that they're still family owned and they were looking for investment, I believe. If they're still looking for that investment, which this article... Well, they, I think they're seems really looking for that they investment are, now. <laughs> they're really not doing a very good job of making investors confident to put their money in it. No, no. Hey, and uh, the Mario versus Rabbit sequel, uh, that didn't do well either. So <laughs> Ubisoft is, is having a bad day all around. And it's not just in the uh, the sort of the games directly that we're talking about that are looking bad because uh, one brief look at their finances as well is uh, not good viewing. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't just these uh, these three unannounced games. They've also cancelled Ghost Recon game that was coming out Frontline. These are major titles. You know, these are obviously not quite on the scale of Assassin's Creed, but uh, you know, Ghost Recon. There was a time when that was a front-facing part of the Ubisoft lineup, you know, alongside Rainbow Six and other titles. Fingers crossed they can get themselves out of it, because as I say, like, there's enough Ubisoft titles out there that I really enjoy that I don't want to see them go anywhere, but not looking good. Just give me a f***ing good Splinter Cell game, Ubisoft. No, f*** that. Just do Division 3 and make it good. I Honestly, I would take a good, good Splinter Cell game any day over Division 3, or even, like, goddamn... I would take uh, a good Splinter Cell game over Dead Space. I'm I'm hard pushed to say Silent Hill because I, I honestly I think I'll probably I'll take my Silent Hill remake, but that's one that I have to think about in terms of how much I want a really good Splinter Cell remake. So now it's moving on to something a little bit more positive for our final news story today. We mentioned last week that uh, people were speculating about Starfield's release date, potentially being I believe it was the 12th of April, which is the space launch day or some such. Well. 
an online leak has potentially suggested Redfall's release date. Now, Redfall, of course, is another Bethesda game due to come out. Rumours had sort of put it at the first half of this year, and, you know, the rumour mill, how it is, is always speculating new things. But a recent leak has suggested that it could actually be as soon as May 2nd. Okay, okay. Still still pretty far off. <laughs> it's further off than the uh, predicted date for Starfield. Exactly, which makes sense. It does, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's not going to come uh, any time around April, is it, if, if it's rumoured that Starfield is going to be imminent. And the other interesting thing about this leak, which sort of gives it a little bit more credence than just just sort of standard rumour, is that this rumour came from Twitter user Xtasis, or Xtasis, who had previously leaked information regarding overdose hideo kojima's upcoming oh game. yes okay yeah we covered that on the pod a little earlier yeah yeah we certainly did which many sort of believe this makes this a bit more credible because the hideo kojima obviously confirmed that that was true mm, yeah so you know take it all with a pinch of salt we don't know but quite cool news particularly if you if like me you're a bethesda fan that said i'm desperately searching for details of redfall and i'm trying to think if i've actually you know it's looking like it rings a vague bell but i'm trying to think if i've seen much publicity about this game at all i mean is this uh, something that you've seen much of in terms of gameplay clips no but that's a very deliberate thing from me i'm keeping away from it i see, I see. I, i've been aware of it because i remember when they filed the trademark for the name redfall many were speculating that that could be a clue for Elder Scrolls 6 and where that's going to be but other than that I've sort of stayed away from it a bit to be honest mate because I like to sort of keep in the dark about these sort of things so that when I play it it's a little bit more fresh I'll pick up things through the ether of course like Absolutely, this for example. yeah yeah osmosis of information <laughs> exactly but I'm not going to actively go looking for things on it I'm actually I'm, I'm just taking a very quick look at some gameplay now because I honestly had no f***ing idea about this game <laughs> it's it's uh it's a first person shooter yeah <laughs> The other interesting thing to come out of this is that both Starfield and Redfall are going to launch on Games Pass as day one is. Is uh, Elder Scrolls going to appear on Games Pass day one? Don't know if it's been confirmed, but it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, it definitely wouldn't surprise me. No. To tie a bow on this story, I think we will probably hear more at the rumoured Xbox sort of direct if you like yeah when is that when's that actually taking place I, i'm not actually sure because i don't know if it's actually officially happening it's sort of been speculated that they're going to do their own event but they wanted to give it a bit of time after the game awards but i don't think it's actually been confirmed yet no that yeah there isn't a release date i'm just looking here there's no showcase date there is a bethesda developer direct on the 25th of january oh, okay okay so you know watch this space they may be speaking about both of those games may even confirm the release dates who knows it's all on the cards to be a good year for gaming fingers crossed man fingers crossed last year wasn't too bad so let's uh let's see if this year can hold a torch to it shall we well last year gave us elden ring so uh let's yeah. see let's and see. ragnarok which uh by all accounts yeah. is fucking amazing so yeah. yeah yeah so with that i think we come to the end of the news so why don't we take a gander at what we've been up to in mass effect as we mosey on over to completionist corner sting coming soon sting coming soon, sting coming soon. So, opening episode of Completionist Corner proper, Mass Effect 1. Yeah, I've been really looking forward to getting onto this section, man. Uh, Mass Effect is, is a game that, uh, you know, I haven't given it its proper dues over the years. And to finally be starting this off and also playing it alongside someone, it's it's given me something to kind of work towards. And, uh, you know, it's it, it's been looking forward this week to sort of bringing this up and discussing it with you. So, yeah, let's get it kicked off. Couldn't agree more, man. I f***ing love this game and uh, I'm very much looking forward to discussing it with you. Before we get too much into the story, I think we should probably set the scene a little bit. Yeah, good idea. Absolutely. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your character, Will? What are they called? What class are they? <laughs> What's their personality like? Have you given them a random backstory? Do tell. Yeah, so uh, my character, uh, you know, I, I really set out in this game uh, with the character's creator to make some sort of abomination. I was really dead set that I was going to kind of go against what I do typically, which is take it really seriously and try and make a character <laughs> that I really like the look of and someone that I can actually bear to stand the look of for what is potentially going to be a trilogy of games that we'll at some point get around to completing. But this game, uh, given that I'm playing the Renegade class, going to be doing a lot of crazy stuff, I figured that we would just go and try and make my character look like an absolute mutant. And James, as I'm sure you discovered while I played this as well, quite a disappointing character creator. 
You're being very nice. It's a completely shit character <laughs> creator is what it is. Very limited uh, in terms of the things that you're able to do. It seems like all of the facial features are essentially just picked from, uh, you know, various different shapes of, you know, eyes, nose, mouth. And then sliders that are extremely limited. They definitely could have done with increasing the range of which they were allowed, you know, allow you to do your sliders, but... Pretty sure there's a mod that unlocks them. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I, I have yeah. a feeling it's probably a lot to do with uh, the animations that they use for the faces and how it would look yes, quite dopey yeah. if you... So they opted for the whole not allowing you to make your character look stupid, which to me is the wrong decision. They should have uh, I agree. Should allowed you to it. just make... You know, if you want to play like a dumb looking person, then you should be able to do that if you're going to allow them to create a character. In my book, at least. So eh, I completely it's, agree. It's choice, I think so. they fixed it for Andromeda. If I Did remember they? correctly, I, th I think <laughs> if I remember correctly, you can make some utter nonsense in Andromeda. I could be wrong though. So I ended up with a you know a character that looks sort of semi strange, but more resembles like kind of a, a purple haired Emma Stone type on the, okay. on the character now, and it works well. Honestly, I believe that they actually changed the uh, voice actor for uh, Fem Shep or Jillian, as she will yeah. be known for the uh, the rest of the segment. They actually brought on Jennifer Hale, who provided the voice for Fem Shep in 2 and 3, but I don't think she was the voice for the first game, so I think that they finally brought her back on board. The game gives you a little bit of an option to pick your kind of history and how you enlisted sort yeah. of thing. What was your background? Were you Spacer? Were you Earthborn or Colonial? Uh, I think I went for Colonial. So that's the one where you you live on a outskirts planet in the Attican Traverse. That's right. Yeah, exactly. I Yeah, because I think otherwise you're like born in a kind of a city and you enlist in an academy sort of thing. Or you, You've got the right sort of idea. It's yeah. uh, We'll get into it more with my one because mine's going to be slightly different. But Spacer is both your parents are in the military. You were born on ships and you just travel around constantly that's right, and then yeah. enlist. And then Earthborn is uh, you're an orphan on Earth. You're in a gang doing petty crimes and then you escape it by enlisting. And I went for option C, which is... Uh kind of just living out in the middle of nowhere yeah bum f nowhere doing nothing <laughs> yeah just sort of jamming little colonial planet out there yeah yeah kind of yeah. You're, you're like a some sort of colony uh on the outer rim or something yeah and then uh yeah as you say slavers come and destroy your planet and then mm. you're saved by an, a passing alliance patrol Bruiser? i think it's is. Not, all right, i think it's yeah. patrol yeah. yeah so then yes what then was your um your nature i suppose for lack of a better thing did you go ruthless if you're a renegade? Oh, uh, do you know what? I wasn't. I think I went for Soul Survivor, I think, in Interesting. the end. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I like the one where basically you saw a bunch of crazy battle and uh, went through a bunch of hardships, but you were the uh, the one guy alive. So you're right yeah. that Ruthless would have been the kind of the typical uh, renegade choice. Um to be 100% honest with you, literally, uh, during the character creation, I completely forgot that I was doing a few Renegade <laughs> class. So, like, it wasn't until I had my first few, like, dialogue things, like, oh, shit, I'm supposed to be a dick. <laughs> like, <laughs> I did it, and obviously that was, you know, before I had any main interactions. It was kind of like the moment I'd finished creating my character. But, yeah, I got to say, whilst I was picking all of that stuff, I didn't have it in my head at all that I was uh, going to be a Renegade for the rest of the playthrough. Fair, or at least yeah. that I was going to be strictly a Renegade to the absolute maximum degree sort of thing because we've kind of agreed that even if our conscience is telling us to not do something we're still gonna pursue the pinnacle of whatever we're going for in terms of uh renegade or paragon yeah and uh, i suppose it's time to talk about classes now a little bit or do you want to give a, a bit of background on your character before we move on to that yeah sure man so my character is literally the opposite to yours in nearly every single way you went okay. fem shep i've gone <laughs> male shep had to be. Interestingly, we didn't actually discuss the characters at all, apart from saying I'm going to be Paragon and Will's going to be Renegade. And my character is named Julius. Oh, right, which okay. Is, which is a little Jillian bit similar to Jillian. Exactly. Very good. We've got Jillian Jules here. <laughs> I started off as a spacer. Right, that if it's. I'm going yeah. like the full fucking, like, stereotypical hero soldier guy, Paragon, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's... I went spacer. Both my parents were in the military, and then I just joined following suit. And I picked War Hero which is one of the natures you can have uh, that isn't Soul Survivor or Ruthless, which basically is my guy was leading a squad of troops in a near impossible situation 
got caught in a town where like the enemy were coming in in vast numbers and basically single-handedly stopped them from breaching the town and saved all the civilians and stuff like this so bit of a f- legend my guy a bit of a big deal um and in terms of character creation uh this fucking thing i i hate the character creation of mass effect for many many reasons because you mentioned there that they they limit it so that the animations don't look dopey they look fucking dopey anyway they do i was gonna say there was there was definitely points for in this i was going i know andromeda got a hard time on their facial animations yeah. but i mean to be fair the, the games are a lot older it's not bad for 2007 but no, it's, it's not bad for 2007. We're currently not, in the year of 2023. So. Exactly, it's not great <laughs> for mod. But yeah, and I basically made a quite good-looking chap. How close does he look to default chap? What kind of hair you go in? Sort of thing? Oh, nothing like default chap. He's got sort of um, the hairstyle where it's just sort of down and a bit shaggy and loose, which is what inspired the name Julius because it reminded me of a Caesar haircut. Oh, right. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I made him quite good-looking. Uh, he's got paragon blue eyes like the same color as Electric. paragon bar yeah nice yeah um he's got sort of black hair with a bit of salt and pepper because my plan is that across the three games i'm going to make him slightly grayer each time he's going to uh, age okay okay very nice and he's got one scar from his sort of war hero days which is just a little one on the nose just to show you know a bit rugged <laughs> he's been in a scrape before exactly but you don't want to ruin the face you know no! And uh, he's pure paragon. He's uh, always going for the lawful way, always the good way. And yeah, not a womanizer. Very much unlike my uh, my renegade character from back in the day. And your Assassin's Creed character. <laughs> oh no, but my Assassin's Creed character is not a womanizer. He's no, a, just everything a, a humanizer. <laughs> like yeah. it just like if it's uh, if it breathes and it's uh, if it's got a it, hole. Oh no, God. <laughs> it's got a he, hole i'm gonna fill it <laughs> yeah he, he really took the any holes a goal seriously yeah, exactly <laughs> but no so yeah that's uh that's where we are that's that's julius and uh he's sort of a bit of a goody two shoes but surprisingly so far it's still been quite fun but we'll get into that a bit more further down the line so yeah so that now that we've uh sort of given a brief background on the bios of our characters and things like that let's talk about classes what class did you go for man uh so i actually opted to go for a vanguard class this time around very nice we discussed previously our plans for some of the classes and I wanted to get one that was a bit of a mixture because you're able to do kind of a, a combo of like space magic, we're going to call it. Are we? <laughs> they might call it biotics, I call it, space, it space magic. magic. That's fine. But uh, yeah, um, so I wanted a mixture of sort of having combat and a vanguard is, is skilled with pistols and shotguns. Uh, you know, I, I chose that class also because my main solution for winning battles in my last playthrough of this game, although I didn't manage to complete it, was primarily using a sniper rifle uh it's, it's a very powerful weapon but i wanted to like give myself a bit more of a challenge and uh and try something new and also have a bit more access to some of the powers you get i've been experimenting with the fact that you can lift up enemies and chuck them and, and stuff like that as well you've kind of got some space matilda powers oh space matilda space powers and space matilda powers is is what my uh jillian jillian shep is rocking <laughs> So I'm looking forward to sort of seeing what the, that entails, some of the powers down the line. And, uh, and you know, for now, I'm pretty sure that a pistol and shotgun is going to comfortably carry me through a lot of the, the larger challenges of the game. Very fine choice. I've never played a Vanguard myself. I have fucked with biotics before. Oh, sorry. I have fucked with Space Matilda powers before. Oh, uh, yeah. Because no. I was messing with doing um, the Adept class, which is pure biotic. Yeah, yeah. I was tempted, but I didn't want to go the whole hog. I still wanted guns and, to, you know, have some armor as well. Yeah, yeah. So, man, what about you? What class did you go for? Well, uh, in sort of direct responses to what you've just said there, which is, yeah, yeah, sniping's too easy, man. <laughs> <laughs> not too easy it, it became a crutch for me in my playthrough sort of thing and i think that's probably why you picked it right you know it's yeah, good <laughs> well no yeah i know how good it is right so um when i did my first trilogy playthrough um, i played infiltrator which is a combination of combat and tech rather than biotics oh, okay okay which specializes in sniper rifle pistols gets medium armor and then can do things like um encryption you can focus on electronics which gives you more shields and things like that and you hack better or something hack or... better yeah yeah, right, all that good stuff. Right. And your grenade damage is I was just about to ask, does tech give you additional explosive damage? 
And those does, grenades yeah. are cool in this game as well. Oh man, so good. So I forgot good, how man. good they were actually going back to them. But yeah, so uh, that's what I did in my previous playthrough. And as I mentioned, I was sort of messing with the idea of going adept for something a bit different. But I, I did some research. I looked on YouTube of some playthrough of Mass Effect 1 specifically with the adept class. The spells weren't really doing it for me. Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. spells. The spells, the space Matilda powers. The space Matilda powers weren't really doing it for me. So I actually just went Infiltrator again because I know how fun it is. And honestly, it's the best decision I've made because it is so much fun. The difference is, is that when I did my first playthrough, I basically exclusively used pistols in Mass Effect 1. But I'm using the sniper more in this one because as part of my whole backstory with the whole war hero gimmick, the reason right, he was able right. to do that is because he was sniping everyone. Sat in bushes. Sneaky sh**. Exactly. So really having fun with it once again. Obviously, it's been a number of years since I played as well. So I'd forgotten a lot of the cool stuff you can do. But yeah, very much an infiltrator sort of sneaky type guy. But also because I'm impatient, I still just go in guns blazing as well. Yeah. yeah and and yeah. the good thing about the snipers in Mass Effect 1 is you can almost use them as a shotgun. <laughs> so do they bring up the sight, the scope to your eye quite quickly or? Uh, not noticeably quicker than other games, but it's more once you're in it. Typically in other games, if someone shoots you, you get knocked about quite a lot. Right. Okay. And because with weapon attachments and various things, I've spec'd it to do incredibly high damage with incredible high knockback right right so right. i knock people on the floor and they're fucked and i can just put two or three more bullets into them and they're dead how many iterations of character uh did you go through before this was your kind of final setup oh god oh geez yeah i probably should have mentioned that in the character career so uh according to my steam page i have played mass effect legendary edition for 23 hours in total <laughs> and and i know that my file that i have going is 13 hours right just so... over so i've spent 10 hours creating various characters, getting them to cutscenes, realizing their shit, starting again. Bruh. Oh, it's painful because you have to watch this. You can't skip the cutscenes either. So you have to watch the same thing over you and over again. You do this to yourself all yeah. the time. Well, no, but dude, if it's exactly like you said earlier. If I'm taking a character through a trilogy, it has yeah, to look, if I don't sure. like the look of it, yeah. then I'm going to delete it halfway through Mass Effect 2. And that's going to be worse. Maybe I got uh, lucky, I think, with my character because I like sat with the objective of making them look a bit weird. When yeah. they do look a bit weird, it's kind of like to be expected. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Whereas I had to make mine, for me this is, I didn't have to, but I had to make mine look good. And then I don't mind the odd animation jank because you can't do anything about that. But if I'm in the elevator scenes, for example, and I look at him and I think, you look like a c <laughs> then, I, then I have to start again. And there's a lot of like, kind of like subtle facial animations and direction in this. Yeah. So they'll give you like a cutscene that's supposed to be like a character exchanging a subtle knowing glance or something. Yeah. But because the facial animations aren't quite there, it's kind of, you get what they were going for, but yeah. it, it just looks like they kind of had a mild stroke for a few seconds and then kind of came back. I think uh, Mass Effect is, you know, the, the, the overarching thing is that obviously humanity were space bound, making this discovery from a kind of Promethean uh, alien race essentially massively advanced our technology and then put us on a course to actually bumping into other races of aliens amongst the galaxy. Is that kind of around the, the right lines? Basically. I suppose, in a nutshell. That's the gist, right? Humanity was kind of, we were just doing our thing, and then we discovered some ancient alien technology, and then we discovered, you know, how we can catapult ourselves across the galaxy using these things called mass relays. The hu human race discovered uh, these mass effect relays, which sort of, I believe in game, it says it catapulted our technology forward by a couple hundred years. Mm, mm. And whether or not this is what put us in view of the other alien races, I'm not sure. I think they were probably aware of us before that. However, our dealings with these other alien races properly came to the fore when we sort of discovered the Mass Effect Relay and started doing business with the Citadel, which is the main sort of hub, if you like, of the Council, which is essentially the governing body for the major alien races throughout the galaxy and the universe. There are a number of alien races in this game, but as we get to the start of Mass Effect 1, I believe that there's only three races that are actually on the Council, which is the Turians, the Asari, and the Salarians. With the Asari sort of being... Sexy blue people, right? Sexy blue people with tentacle heads, not to be confused with the Twi'leks from Star Wars. <laughs> 
They've got kind of like little, little thin little tentacles on their heads, whereas the Twi'lex have like big, thick tentacles on their heads. If you think of the Twi'lex as having a couple of elephant trunks on their heads, whereas the Asari have like an upside down squid. <laughs> yeah, 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 that'll work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's kind of where we're rocking. Um, the Turians are sort of... Um, the bad guys. Well, no. Really. <laughs> I'm a space all. racist. <laughs> the Turians are just the fucking bad guys. No, the Turians. They sound are evil great. as fuck, dude. They're the bad guys. Come on, man. The Turians are great. Just because the sort of one of the main antagonists in this game happens to be just a happens to be a Turian. <laughs> but no, so the Turians are kind of um, almost reptilian-looking, uh, just sort of very typical alien type oh, things. Oh, kind of like a bad guy would look. Yeah, yeah snake yeah, yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> Well, one of the Asaris, who you called sexy just now, is also a bad guy. Does that make the Asaris evil? Uh, <laughs> hey, 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 I've never seen an Asari. There's also an evil Solarian, and they just look like ants. Do they? Oh, God. They, okay. have, like, ant, they have like ant heads. They're, they're bipedal yeah, humanoid yeah. type deals, but they have sort of ant heads. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, big eyes. Yeah. Have had other species become attracted to me before. Awkward. But I, th I think that covers the fucking council races nicely, doesn't it? <laughs> and uh, basically, humanity has been trying to get a, a, on the council for a number of years, but have always been pushed back because the alien races feel that we're growing too quickly. They think we're a bit dangerous. They feel like we sort of bulldoze everything. We're kind of babies in this in this field of aliens. They're, we're like, a, I guess they view us as a fairly undeveloped race. They're not quite looking down at us like that, but they, they see us more as a threat. So they don't want to give us too much power straight away, as I said essentially what it is mm, mm. and sort of over time we uh, built relationships with these alien races where we live very diplomatically with them very peacefully and sort of that is really where we sort of get to the start of mass effect itself because shepherd's sort of opening mission that you're sort of thrown into is to recover a beacon from a planet called eden prime which is one of the sort of um standout planets for human restoration projects yeah and it's also it's it's the ability to it's the fact that it's so far away from earth isn't it it's kind of like a a point of pride for them because they're able yeah. to both defend it and make it sustainable as well. well more so that's making it sustainable stuff they've given it an atmosphere that makes it easy to live in and they're really sort of colonizing it and showing that it can be done basically there are other projects yeah. like it in the universe but Eden Prime is, as you can guess by the name, the, <laughs> yeah, the premiere. Yeah. And the council have a, a special sort of group of operatives. Enforcers, if you will. Yes, enforcers, if you were quite right, who are called the Spectres, which I believe stands for Special Tactical and Reconnaissance. Oh, really? Operative, something like that, yeah. Someone from the council really went there with that acronym? Pretty sure, yeah. God damn it, that's okay. And I think they God. even say it. Yeah, they, I bet so. they were so pleased with themselves when they came up with that but in it was a council that meeting. Turian as well. <laughs> but it was a fucking Turian. <laughs> Mentioned that there's a beacon on Eden Prime and uh, as part of this mission a spectre has joined your crew to sort of come along and check it out but everyone's a little bit suspicious it's like you don't just send a spectre on a shakedown run well yeah they also kind of bill it as this is your this is kind of your proving grounds as well the mission you're on isn't everything it seems uh, you you're also there as sort of the beginnings of your trial to trial run to joining the spectres potentially which it is implied that humanity needs as a result you know to sort of further their standing in the galactic space cutting long story short you then get a video transmission from eden prime showing that a, a synthetic race called the geth have actually come to the planet looking to take the beacon so then instead of sort of just being you and nihilus going down and jumping in and grabbing the beacon you know having a little jolly and just sort of escorting it back it becomes one so simple if only they could be exactly exactly it sort of becomes a bit more of a military operation so Nihilus goes down and goes on his own and scouts ahead while you and two other crewmates go down. Old Caden Alenko, shout outs, voiced by the same voice actor as Carter Nassi from KOTOR, which is All the right, okay. reason I like Caden. It's pretty boring <laughs> otherwise. And a chap called Corporal Jenkins. Don't bother to remember that name. No need to. I really wouldn't bother, yeah. yeah he ain't gonna well. last very long, though. <laughs> the very short-lived yeah. Corporal Jenkins. Basically, this is when you first get control of the combat you get down there shoot a few puffy aliens they kind if, of look a little bit to, like yes. the flood the gas balls yeah the gas ball aliens yeah and uh, yeah and then you start traversing eden prime and uh some stuff happens i'm gonna tag you in here well why don't you talk to me a little bit about your first foray into eden prime 
yeah, so uh, after wandering around and uh, shooting some of the local flora and fauna, as a, as a renegade would. As anyone would, I did that too as a paragon. <laughs> yeah. You run into your first sort of geth encounter, which is these sort of flying drones that immediately light up Corporal Jenkins. And he gets fucked. Like, he gets <laughs> just killed so easily. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, he it was a corporal, right? You, you assume that there's I think some military corporal, training? Right? I'm pretty sure. Not according to that guy. Apparently, right. his uh, his technique when you first encounter a new life is just stand there and take it like the end of platoon. Just fucking. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't it say something like, uh, tore through his shields, didn't even stand does, a chance? But, or something it like does, that. Like, but come now. Like, apparently, those ones were like, they had crazy energy because, like, nothing tears through your shields like That's that. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, he, they definitely, like, give the grunts the shit to equipment, I guess. In this. They must have used <laughs> the good ammo on Jenkins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, and and I guess that's also the the one of the earliest opportunities that it really gives you to kind of have a, a bit of a renegade slash paragon choice as well. Because uh, in my class, the guy was like, "Oh, what do we do about this guy?" And I was just like, "Leave the fucking body. We'll move yeah. on." Kind of thing. Forget this of... guy. He's nothing. <laughs> yeah, he's nothing to me. He's dead now. Whereas my guy was literally like, oh, "Don't worry about we'll it. We'll remember we'll, him we'll, forever. We'll, we'll recover the body and hold a funeral." But I need you to focus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get your head back in the game, soldier. We got other shit to do. Was kind of my uh, yeah, yeah my approach there. <laughs> and I like those little bits of flavor as well. Uh, you know, right out of the bat, the game is kind of giving you that opportunity to carve your path through in terms of the character. Uh, so yeah. yeah, it's a load of fun. It's a load of fun. Yeah, no, as I say, uh, very very funny the renegade option with Jenkins there. <laughs> And from there, you sort of kill a few more drones and whatnot. And then you meet your first sort of recruitable squad mate, if you like, that doesn't start off in your crew. Out with the old, in with the new. Ah, exactly. We have an empty chair for <laughs> Jenkins? you, Ashley. Who's Jenkins? <laughs> F*** that guy. Welcome aboard, Ashley Williams. <laughs> so Ashley Williams is um, a chief gunnery officer for another squadron of the Alliance. And hopefully didn't all her guys get wiped out as well. So it's, it's really convenient. So. Yeah. yeah. And actually, you end up killing one of them because they become a husk, which is basically where a human gets put on a giant needle thing that gets, shoots up in the air. Their life gets drained out of them and they become a bit cybernetic-y. A bit robo-y. They, they look a bit blue. and uh, Yeah, and they explode yeah. with electricity and things like that. Yeah. But yeah, she joins your crew. She's also the one that's um, sent through the video distress call where you saw the planet being destroyed by the um the geth and stuff that's it because yeah it's it you know it, it's the routine thing right and then all of a sudden you see the distress call and, and the big massive alien uh geth ship in the background as well for the purposes of where we are in the game yes it's a geth ship all right then keep your secrets and you also get to uh berate ashley again there's a bit more flavor to your character here <laughs> like so uh, when she explains that her her, her people die you're like oh you know you just left them all to die sort of thing despite the fact that I chose the uh, the lone survivor uh, yeah. beginning thing. <laughs> like, I chose that. I still berated her for doing exactly the same thing. But yeah, so you meet up with Ashley, you walk on a little bit further, and you then sort of head to the dig site where the beacon was being held, but <gasps> it's gone! Oh, no! typical game. Yeah. Shit. The thing you needed is now in another castle. Fuck yeah, sake. Exactly. So no, so it, it actually turns out that the beacon has been moved to um, a sort of train station type place for extraction. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. So you move on from the dig site and you find a couple of huts. In one of the huts, there's some nice goodies. But what's in the other hut, Will? Uh, there's a couple of people in there, a couple of survivors. Uh, yeah. One, I believe, is a, a doctor inhabitant. Yep. Uh, I think she's some sort of doctor, at least. I believe and they're both scientists, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, one has kind of obviously the, the whole invasion and the battle scenario has left him truly rattled. He's kind of all over the place, kind of mad rambling and stuff like that. Kind of PTSD type deal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The guy needs help. Yeah. Help is not what I gave him. I gave him uh, a, a fist to the face. I gave him a left hook. <laughs> yeah. Essentially, my extreme option was just knock the guy out and progress on. And the doctor's just like, what the hell is wrong with you? You know, which is yeah. it's like understandable sort of thing again. Yeah. And as you say, just like, oh, he was going to hurt somebody sometimes. <laughs> Put him out <laughs> and now. And the beauty of this game is, is that Renegade isn't evil. So there's a lot of ambiguity. It's just being like ridiculously efficient and being a dick. Yeah. 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 I love it. And, you know, the character that you're playing, Shepard, you know, the uh, high up in the military, absolute badass, essentially like 
a, a hero of humanity sort of thing is he's already regarded as pretty much at that point isn't he? he's like the best of the best kind of thing Shepard is the pinnacle yeah exactly and i think that it's funny because you can imagine both sides of that coin both sides of that coin play really well you know the kind of the as you say the electric glowing blue good guy that's just a you know a pinnacle of everything good yeah or you can be a kind of like sleazy captain zap brannigan type where you're just kind of sleeping with everyone and being absolutely ruthless <laughs> or at least trying to sleep with everyone anyway <laughs> yeah 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 the success on that we'll see checkmate so what did you end up doing i'm sure you were a lot more compassionate with this uh, poor traumatized young man uh, unfortunately there is no sort of good option in sort of as an antithesis to that basically you just don't use the dialogue choice what's wrong with him oh right okay or okay. you can use that dialogue choice but then you, it's like oh yeah he just needs to rest or whatever and then i think you pick i'll shut him up which is then you punch him <laughs> Uh, you just say goodbye at that point. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. And you just sort of leave him and he goes, there is no hope, we're all going to die. And it's like, oh man, someone should really punch you in the face, but it's not going to be me, <laughs> not today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you get to um, a sort of hill that overlooks the train station where you are and you see sort of a hut just before the train station. You then see the train station itself. And a cutscene starts and you see that Nihilus, your Turian buddy, is sneaking up on, on, a, on a ruffian-looking guy but catches his face and sort of stops because oh, I know you. And this is where we meet antagonist A, <laughs> Saren, who is another Turian. So this is what Will was saying earlier when you sort of say, well, one of the Turians is a fucking bad guy. Kind of, I'll give you that. However, he does have a good reason for being a bad guy, which we won't get into until the end of the game. He's kind of Turian, but he's kind of like cybered up a bit isn't he he's a bit of borged up like uh you know he's got some he's got some pulsing blue circuitry going on and his eye looks like it's definitely been replaced with a like an eye camera you're very much on the money here well, oh, yes, that's, that's i'm definitely exactly... not in league with the ancient <laughs> like cybernetic bio race despite <laughs> looking like one how do they explain that away? How do they do they do they ever explain that away? They're just like, oh yeah, Saren, he's just kind of roboty. Nothing to do with the robot evil guys, but he's just a bit roboty. They do at the end. They kind of explain all that, but basically, he's enhanced to make him a better specter. Of course, right? Yeah, that's that's the sort of the cover, if you like. <laughs> but no, yeah. So as you've said, there he's he is a Turian, but he's a bit more roboty, bit bit of a cyborg, and. Uh, Nihilus completely stops, lets his guard down and says, Saren, you know, because they're both members of the Spectre group of Good the council. Good to see you, so. bro. Exactly, kind of. And uh, from the first word Saren says, you can tell he's evil. Yeah, <laughs> he I know. He's, he's he got like a slow, like drawly voice. Exactly. It's just, there's no way that guy is a good guy. Nihilus is like, what are you doing here? No one else knew about the beacon sort of thing. And, oh, nothing. Uh, just close your eyes and turn around. <laughs> pretty much. I mean, he sort of goes like, it's like uh, Saren says, yeah, the council thought you could use an extra set of hands, basically. <laughs> As he's like un unglocking his gun. <laughs> well, no, kind of, he puts his hand on his shoulder reassuringly, and Nihilus sort of puts his gun away and sort of looks off into the middle distance and goes, yeah, so it's much worse than we thought it was. And Saren just sort of like holds his gun up to the back of Nihilus's head and goes, don't worry, I've got it under control. And then pops him in the head. And then the cutscene ends. Like just before he, he pops him in the head. You just hear the gunshot. The echoing gunshot as you start playing. It's it's very effective. It's really cool. cool piece of cinematography actually. Yeah, it works well. Yeah. yeah. And at this point you then sort of wander down. And uh, there is a hut on the right hand side that you can explore. If you so choose. Yeah, that's a, it's another opportunity to uh, terrorise some of the locals. Uh, if you are that way inclined. I, I managed to sort of extort... A, uh, a bunch more supplies from some people. I think that they were, uh, they're making out that they're just hiding in the shed to hide out, but you slowly ascertain that they're actually going back to check on some supplies because they were working with the smuggler and uh, they were they were checking in on their goods and essentially you you call them out on that bullshit, take all their stuff. And then a little bit down the line, you meet the, the main smuggler as well and you kind of do the same to him as well. You At least if you're playing as the renegade side, I was mashing away at the intimidate, intimidate, you're bullshit me give me the good shit the charm option is the same but it's nicer it's like people are dying because of this there's nothing else you can do to help it's like well I, well i do have a grenade mod you can have yeah <laughs> whereas i'm like uh pull my chain one more time and i'm about to put this blaster pistol to your temple yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah it's, it's great the difference and but you get the same things so but the outcome right? is the same <laughs> 
But yes, yeah, so you know, you actually meet um, Powell, which is uh, the smuggler down at the docks, uh, when you find Nihilus's body because right. yeah. he actually turns out he actually saw the whole thing with Saren and Nihilus. That's right. And um, he actually becomes sort of a witness, which is going to be good evidence in something that happens a little later. Ah, okay. But then, sort of from there, you you get the tr- you have a little fight with some Geth on the train, kill them all take the train to the next little bit where the beacon's being held and there's a little sort of not quite a quick time event but you sort of have a timed section where you have three minutes to disarm four bombs that are going to blow the facility up there's geth sort of coming at you just trying to like kick your ass as well and stop you from doing it um and that's when you then get led down to where the beacon is being held you get a mini little cut scene where it shows that saren uses the beacon for whatever reason he just sort of floats in the air arms outstretched like he's pretending to be jesus yeah that's right and then basically when you arrive at the beacon it's flashing and active and it's like oh and ashley even says oh, i wasn't doing that before and as shepherd rings back to the normandy which is your ship your spaceship's called the normandy fucking caden that fucking annoying piece of shit starts fucking around doesn't he with a beacon now you see this is very interesting because it's ashley in my one because oh. it must be because i'm male and you're female oh that is interesting okay yeah, yeah so it was caden that starts sniffing around on my one and uh yeah. he activates it's that ashley that starts bit. shipping around on my one because oh. so, so it must be that that's the whole thing because i think uh because that's one of your romance options i suppose is caden. it is yes right okay. but one of the things that's worth saying at this stage is that mass effect was actually very progressive for its time because you did have straight options and gay options both male and female yeah 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 but i think that caden and ashley are straight only but no so yeah as you say caden in your one sort of gets a little bit too nosy gets a bit close to it and uh, ashley in my one and, and the beacon starts sucking them in i don't really know why your character would have done this but being the hero that my character <laughs> yeah. is my character saw ashley going and was like caden get your ass out the way i gotta save this bitch runs over like saves her like chucks ashley backwards and then sort of gets caught in the takes the full himself. blast yeah and and sort of does the whole jesus thing that saren was doing and you get sort of a piecemeal sort of um vision of the world just getting absolutely tanked like everything yeah. being destroyed every Death, single life getting wiped out and then you pass out the beacon explodes and you then wake up back on the normandy in your sick bay what's up doc have a little uh, clean bill of health from Doc. She does say that you've got some unusual brain activity, but other than that, you get a pretty much a clean bill of health. Yeah, exactly. Um, because it's basically just the force of the blast that's knocked you out, and then, as you say, abnormal brain waves. Yeah, which is because exactly. you have a vision imprinted on your brain. <laughs> you've literally got a brain tattoo. But basically, yeah, a brain imprint. And yeah, and that basically serves as the tutorial. You're now sort of then into the main sort of story beat, if you like. Like what you're then tasked with doing is returning to the citadel and informing the council of what's gone on and your commanding officer captain anderson has history with saren and with uh powell mentioning saren by name captain anderson is just like holy shit saren's involved this guy's a motherfucker let's go we need to bl- get the council involved and blame this guy um and that is where you start the game properly if you like you get beamed down to the citadel and that is where we're going to leave it for this week Ooh, on a bit of a cliffhanger. A little bit. I like it. I like it. Yeah. We're doing uh, kind of like episodic uh, releases of this now. Teasing that shit out, because uh, in reality, this is probably like, uh, I don't know, the first two hours of the game or something like that. Uh, know, not that, a huge yeah. chunk. If and uh, cards on the table. This is uh, this is more down to, to me than James. I'm, I'm sure that if James was left to his own devices, he may well have uh, even completed the first uh, Mass Effect this week if he had really put his mind to it. I mean, I didn't game for two days. <laughs> so it could have been done, yeah. possibly. I've, but, uh, I've been letting the team down this time. Uh, you know, we've been making kind of baby steps. So I, I'm definitely... You, you say that, bro. You had families. <laughs> you had family over and things like that. So it's, it's understandable. I'm holding things behind a little bit this week, but I am hoping to dedicate a bit more time uh, in the coming days and uh, certainly uh, the days before the podcast to get a bit more time in on this so uh, hoping to sort of cover a bit more ground next week exactly and be sure to tune into twitch.tv forward slash hoodafunk for the continued adventures of Gillian Shepherd. so with that sort of cliffhanger at the end of the first session of completionist corner that brings us to the end of today's show thanks again for listening if you've made it this far we really appreciate it and uh, if you've enjoyed what you've listened to 
You can, as always, find the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and pretty much anywhere else you get your podcasts by searching for Total Pod Mode. We also post regular video content of our playthroughs, stream highlights, as well as the podcast on our YouTube channel, Total Pod Mode. You can also find us on Twitter by searching for at Total Pod Mode, or one word. And whilst you're there, you can find me at Mr. Bames, and I'm also on Twitch under twitch.tv forward slash Mr. Bames underscore TPM. And you can find me at Hoodafunk on Twitter, and I'm also on Twitch under twitch.tv forward slash Hoodafunk. And be sure to keep an eye out for at least one of us streaming this week. It'll probably be Will. Like, let's yeah. be real. It's, it's a, <laughs> yeah, like, in all honesty it's probably gonna be yeah <laughs> <laughs> but no so once again thanks very much listeners thank you listeners we love you we appreciate we you do. yeah i've got to say i think we now have um listeners in every single continent as well so thank you very much we see you <laughs> so with that thank you very much for listening and we'll see you again next week take care everyone bye, bye.